Hey, you've summoned a lesser maker. I've spent a year making this six foot long Mordheim board. And we're gonna take a closer look at things, answer some of your questions, and then we're gonna break the mold and design a new Mordheim board. The first question is, have I ever made something that looked cool that just hasn't really worked? And unfortunately, this entire board kind of feels, falls in this category. The other two work really great, but this one just doesn't have enough uh, choices and uh, elevation and uh, it's really, really flat. Because of that, this board feels really small. I had built this and designed this before I'd ever played the game. So I feel like that's pretty understandable. Um, so in the future, I do kind of think I need to revisit this one a bit. Unfortunately, this one fell off the wall and I need to redo it kind of anyway. <laughs> so literally last night, this one fell off the wall. And um, so I think eventually this one does need a, re a bit of a revisit. In my experience, a board works best when it goes from a smaller height on the outside to a taller height in the middle. And this one does the exact opposite of that. So hopefully that helps you design your board. And I think it's time to answer the next question. Since we just asked the question, what doesn't work? I think it's right to ask what does work. And my opinion, this board works a hundred percent and the reason is is this terrain piece in the middle the bridge this bridge adds so much choice to this board every single time i've had a game this board always has felt twice as big as the other one because i can go over a road i can choose to go under it a lot of people ask because i incorporate things onto the build itself is there enough variety in gameplay um, and I feel like it comes from a bit of a fear if they do the same. And because this one has so much terrain, uh, terraforming and uh, choices um, and the gameplay and the modularity between the two really adds uh, so many, so many different op options because each side of these boards uh, matches up perfectly with each other. And um, that is something I'm really happy with. So anyway, let's get to the next question. So I was just asked, what is my dream board? And I can't, I can't consider that question without referencing this board because um, the amount of verticality and choice on this board, this one is my dream board. I, the foundations itself and the individual buildings look so good. I know this kind of feels like a brag session, but uh, to be completely honest, whenever I look at this stuff, I am in disbelief that I made it. And uh, looking at this one in particular just fills me with so much confidence that I can conquer the next challenge and do something new and do it with confidence. Um, doing something with confidence and faith in yourself, really uh, doing builds from start to finish was just uh, for a whole year has really made me uh, practice and how to uh, challenge myself and what I can do in a week. Uh, I built this one in a day and I can't imagine building that in a day. And the 3D elements that I designed for the building accessories, STL kit, the um, Victorian greenhouse that you guys can download for free is so cool. And I'm just so happy with how everything turned out on this board. I'm really excited for the next challenge. So let's take a look at it. After making three boards basically the same way, I really wanted to try something new and something that scared me a little bit. So we're going to be using this antique briefcase as our Mordheim board base. 
This will make it easy to travel with. I think it's important to start off with reference material. And the most important reference materials are in the rule book itself. Let's see what the creators thought the underworld of Mordheim might look like. When I initially pitched the idea for the Mordheim Catacombs, I had some people say that it would be too dangerous, it wasn't ever traveled with. Rulebook itself contradicts that. You can find a Mordheim map, and if you roll a four, it's a catacomb map. This cat map shows you a way through the catacombs into the city. You may automatically choose the scenario next time you fight the battle. So. There are catacombs, and we do know that regular people visit through them. Here's a reference photo that really piqued my interest. Now, th theoretically, this could be above Mordheim, but I kind of think, especially this one, this one is definitely a picture of what lies below. And these two references as well as this reference right here, really give me and spark inspiration for what uh, new possibilities and new design elements and new STLs that I could create for you guys. Look at that. If that's not underneath Mordheim, I don't know what is. All throughout the book, there are pictures like this of the city delving deeper and deeper within the city itself and the crazier things get. And I'm just really excited to see what the depths of Mordheim have for us. So the most important part of any Mordheim board is to know how much space you're working with. And so I'm going to cut off the front of this case and see how much, what the dimensions are inside. And once the, front is laid down flat I'll know how much space I have to work with horizontally um, it turns out it's going to be like 15 by 18 by 8 inches deep and then I'll have another 18 inches in length to work with as well but I want all this terrain to fit inside this case and that's going to take some engineering and planning and uh Usually I just start building things and then I can incorporate things uh, kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. But this is going to take some uh, intentional planning to get right. So the story I have behind this Mordheim board is a maybe Skaven uh, horde has been eliminated and all the weird stone they have collected has been discovered. And I'm kind of thinking that it was once inside of a uh, cathedral or something for Sigmar. And so there might be some iconography there, but it, there's gonna be a big horde or a meteor of weird stone that's gonna be embedded in the center with scaffolding around it. And then the remnants of a catacomb from the great city before all this stuff happened to it. So that's kind of the basic story I'm going with. And I feel like the story is more important than what actually is going to be built because obviously I'm designing this in 2D and anything I'm adding to that is going to lead to the excavation um, of this giant meteor. Make sure you guys like comment and subscribe uh, for my small channel uh, I put a lot of work into this and um, it goes a long way to pushing this channel into uh, the view of new people and um, thank you so much for sharing it around uh, speaking of being super supportive of the channel I'm going to thank my Patreon members thank you to Leroy, Fetter, Caracol Old School FRP Burning Heart Custom Creations, Anders, Hanover, Grim Drunk, Treborius, Andy, Marchin, Corey, Mike, and our newest patron, Nicholas, The Lich's Laboratory, and Cabu. You guys are awesome. Thank you for signing on. 
I really appreciate it. Having money set aside for each project every week just goes so long uh, to just help fund these videos. And um, I did come up with some new STLs that you guys can download. So make sure you guys check those out. Um, I'm going to be... Uh, the closer we get to this pr board build, the more I'm going to be um, test printing and getting these STLs finalized so that we can release them to everyone. So um, make sure you become a free member on Patreon and that will give you an email notification, I think, um, when those become available. So thank you. I hope you have a good one.